Today I am going to explore infinite visual feedback. This patch might look complicated. There are many parameters and when I change these parameters there are many chaotic unpredictable visual results. These visuals are sometimes fractal-like, they contain a lot of variation in color, shape and form, and when I change any parameter in a very slight amount, the results are both beautiful and extremely unpredictable. But these visuals are actually derived from a single image of a sphere, a single representation of sphere. By wrapping around the visual representation of a sphere, and by adding a few simple effects, it is possible to create these kinds of infinite kaleidoscopic feedback loops that result in beautiful visual patterns that you may use for the creation of visual patterns, uh, interactive visuals, or as the basis for an audiovisual creation. I love works like these. I love works where you can take a simple thing, use a relatively simple rule, and have infinitely complex and emergent results. Let's see how we can make this happen. If I want to create a visual feedback loop, I need to create something to make a visual feedback loop off. What do I mean by this? Well, let's start by creating a 3D jitter world scene. I will create the object jit.world, give it a name, mirror, and I'm going to give it some essential attributes. Floating, at floating set to one, at capture also set to one. When I create this object, I'm going to have this nice window here. Right, that is going to eventually show the output of whatever I have in my JIT world, as well as the resulting visual feedback. The floating attribute makes sure that this window always is in front of my patch, so I can kind of patch things and see the results immediately. And capture is going to make sure that the visuals here are being sent as a jitter texture from jit.world's first outlet, which is essential for our visual feedback algorithm. Now, jit.world is one of those objects that you need to toggle on, so I will create a toggle by pressing T, connect it to jit.world. If I lock the patch and click on the toggle, there now my jit.world is alive. There is not much going on in it though. So maybe, just maybe, I can also create a 3D object. JIT GL grid shape is the max object I'm creating. The argument is also mirror, uh, and when I create this object, I'm going to have this giant, boring gray sphere in my JIT world window. Let's make this a bit more interesting. I will also give it the scale attribute and set it to 0.25, meaning one fourth of its regular default size. I will give it a nice color, 0, 1, 0 0.8 is my favorite color. 0, red, 1 green, and 0.8 blue. There, and now it looks a bit more interesting. When I have an object like this, I can also move it around, right? I can make the object pack, create the list position, 0 dot, space, 0 dot, space, 0 dot, so position, 0, 0, 0, and this is going to be the position of our 3D object in our JitWorld context. Since pack modulates or modifies this list, uh, the first inlet will correspond with position. I don't want to change that. The second inlet will correspond with this zero, and the third inlet will cor correspond with the second zero, and I do want to change those values. So I will create two float number boxes and connect them to the second and third inlets of this pack object. And when I do that, and after I lock the patch and move uh, the numbers, I'm also moving around this 3D shape. Okay, now as we are going to build our visual feedback, it's good to keep track of these parameters we could change that is going to have some chaotic but beautiful results on the feedback, right? So I'm going to also start making a list of the parameters of my system. But to explore this further, we do have to create a uh, JIT world, a, a visual feedback system. So how are we going to do this? Let's think in an analog way first. Uh, to create analog visual feedback, I need, I would need some kind of camera, uh, right? In this case, it's what our JIT uh, win world window is looking at, which would show its contents on a TV screen or some kind of screen that the camera would also be looking at, right? So in essence, I need some kind of imaginary screen in this jit.world window 
that would show what I am seeing here. That would create the visual feedback. So to create this imaginary TV screen or a cinema screen, you can use your own metaphors if you want. I will create the object JIT GL video plane. This object creates exactly that. It will also have mirror as its argument, right? The name of my JIT world context. And it will, if I just create it like this, it just looks like a screen that is currently not showing anything. So it's completely black. I want something from this screen though. I want it to cover the entire window no matter what its size is. And I can do this by giving it the attribute transform underscore reset set to two. And bam, it's here like this. Uh, it's nice, it's covering the entire window, but you might notice there is a little thing missing which is our beautiful 3D green sphere. So we need yet another attribute. This is the art of working with a JIT GL objects or a 3D jitter world, by the way. We need to keep adding and modifying these beautiful attributes. So I'm going to add this attribute called depth underscore enable set to zero, uh, right? Which is going to make sure that the sphere always appears on top or in front of this imaginary TV screen. Okay, now we are going to enable, quote unquote enable, our visual feedback by doing something relatively simple, which is to take the output of jit.world, which is this, right, which is the contents of this window as a jitter texture, as a visual, and plug it into jit gel texture. After we do this, we are going to take its result and we are going to plug it into jit gel video play. Bam. Now, where is the visual feedback? Why isn't there any visual feedback happening? Actually, right now, visual feedback is happening, but it is happening perfectly. That is the problem. There's perfect visual feedback. So if I see something, it's appearing in the background, but it's, of course, right in front of... Uh, my sphere is right in front of this TV screen, so I'm not really seeing the feedback. And this leads us to the cool part of visual feedback, which is the fact that this, this line here, this patch cord containing the jitter texture that is looped back into our TV screen and therefore or jit.world context is an untapped gold mine. I can take this and I can add any kind of visual operation which will be then iteratively done in our visual feedback environment. For instance, if I rotate this visual by a small amount, right? If I like I just rotate it a tiny bit, that would just happen infinitely. Then there will be another rotated one when the feedback continues, and there will be another rotated uh, sphere and so on, which would result in a very beautiful visual pattern, which is something we can start with. If I want to rotate visuals, so if I want to rotate uh, jitter textures, I need to use the object jit.effects.rota. This needs an essential attribute called anchor. Its description says anchor point for rotation, and that by default is 0.5.5, but at the moment of me recording this video, this is bugged, it does not work, so I have to manually type in 0.5.5 as the anchor attribute. Right, so at anchor 0.5 and then again 0.5, which means when I rotate stuff, the center of the screen is going to be the point around which all the pixels are going to rotate. Right, and if I plug this here now, if I plug this between the output of my JIT world and JIT texture and JIT GL video plane, nothing is happening right now. I need to, well, nothing is happening because there is no rotation. There is a central point around which we may rotate. But if I want to rotate something, I need to right click on the first inlet of JITFX Rota when the patch is unlocked to access its dynamic attributes, go to theta, which we see right now is zero, Lock the patch and start playing with this zero. What if this was 0 0.1? Well, look at this. Suddenly we have this rotating uh, image and now it looks like a donut, right? Or a torus if you are uh, geometrically smarter or you have a better vocabulary. And we can see that this rotation is causing this constant uh, sphere thing to happen, uh, right? Like, or just a donut thing to happen because our sphere is constantly rotating. Now, what else can I do with this visual feedback, right? Now I have also my theta. Uh, I can go further. I can maybe change the color of each uh, iteration slightly by using JIT FX hue. 
right? Again, this is not going to do anything on its own, but I can right click the first inlet, choose hue, which is zero and make it something like 0.1 or just one, uh, there we go, or two or three, right? I'll make it one. So we see each iteration is making uh, the sphere or the feedback of the sphere a slightly different color. And this adds up over time. There are even these beautiful fractal light patterns on the sides, which I find super cool. Right, theta and hue offset. Now I can try changing, for instance, the position of my sphere. And look at this. As I change the position of my sphere, I'm actually creating these beautiful spiral-like effects. If I increase the theta, suddenly I am creating faster and faster rotations, or it feels like this rotation is happening faster and faster. Beautiful, look at this. Amazing. As you can see, I am simply manipulating the three basic parameters that I have. And I'm already creating these beautiful kaleidoscopic effects. Lovely. So what else can we change here? First of all, at this stage, we have to be mindful of hue, right? If I increase hue a lot, this shuffling of colors are going to be a bit too strong, a bit too apparent, and it might uh, not be such a nice experience for certain viewers whose eyes and brains are uh, sensitive to color changes. I can, for instance, play around with the bound mode. There we go, the bound mode attribute of JITFX Rotem. Now, bound mode is one of the cool ones. It is one of those uh, attributes that will result in very cool and unpredictable results, things that we might chaotic. Bound mode, right? Let's look at, oh, this is looking incredible already. Look at this, like a beautiful oil painting. Amazing. If we look at the reference for JFX Rota, if we look at bound mode, it's a bit tiny here, but you might be able to read. Boundary handling mode, right? What is bound mode in JFX Rota? It is the answer to a simple question. What happens if I rotate my visuals and some of those visuals are outside of my window? What happens then? Right, right now the default zero means that it's ignored, right? That they're ignored, nothing happens. But if I set bound mode to one, values that exceed the limits are set to zero, right? So they just become completely dark. Right? which means that kind of shears off the uh, the parts of the visuals that are not appropriate. And for our purposes, this kind of creates this sphere we can paint into. Look at how beautiful this is. Increase theta a bit. Maybe make you like this. Make this closer, go closer to the center, and then we can increase the hue a bit. Right, so bound mode one is making sure that the rotations are shearing off when they go over the edge, resulting in this nice cutoff uh, circular look. Now two is wrap, right? Wrap uh, is going to values that exceed the limits are wrapped around to the opposite limit with a modulo operation. Um, okay, uh, values exceed the limits, right? So from what I understand, if the image goes over, it's going to kind of loop back, it's going to appear from the bottom if it goes over the uh, top or if it's going to appear from the left if it goes over the right and vice versa, which should, in theory, there we go, create this beautiful uh, fractal kaleidoscope-like visuals, right? Because they are wrapping around. So we are seeing multiple instances of our visuals. Also super cool. What about bound mode three? Now bound mode three is clip. Right, so uh, values are limited not to exceed min or max, uh, right? So if uh, it goes beyond the limit, it just stays that color. So it's kind of just extended uh, visual effect. Or four is fold, which I also like a lot. Values that exceed the limits are folded back in the opposite direction, right? So if something is going way too farther from the left, let's change to four, they start folding back. They start bouncing back around, which again creates these beautiful, uh, fractal-like visuals. Look at this, amazing. Now my favorite one here is two. I just do love it when uh, it is wrapping around. 
So what else can we change with this? Let's uh, consider a few more possibilities. Now, uh, we made the anchor the middle, but there is, in JFX Rota, another attribute called offsets, right? So, which will let us kind of move, give an offset to the displacements. And if we do this in certain ways, right? Suddenly our visuals are going to look very uh, freaky, by the way, I'm going to, uh, there we go. If I change the offsets, each iteration, each uh, visual uh, feedback is also going to be moved a little bit, which is again going to be resulting in, there we go, these mirror house-like effects, right? Because I'm moving the rotation, the visual feedback each time, either on the x-axis or the y-axis, I'm getting these crazy, psychedelic, beautiful visuals. And this is my favorite one. When I use offset, I feel like I'm cycling through these endless possibilities. Sometimes they're very chaotic. Sometimes they snap together, right? Sometimes uh, they look like fractals. Sometimes they look like spheres. I can play around with the theta again in order to play around with the rotation. Beautiful. Right? I can again explore different bound modes. Give something like one and then bring this back here. Or maybe two is better, I don't know. I think this is something you can explore on your own as well. All right, so what we have to keep in mind is the fact that offset of JFX rota is another parameter we can do. What we need to keep in mind when we do this is the fact that this is endless and this is chaotic, right? And many more is our last uh, parameter. Changing a small parameter results in very unpredictable, for us unpredictable, visual outcomes. This is just a matter of expo exploration. The more you explore, the more comfortable you get with working these, with these kinds of parameters. And you can always add different kinds of effects. Notice how simple this is. Notice the fact that I am only using two effects as a part of my video or visual feedback algorithm and it is already creating these visual these visual shapes that look crazy that look beautiful and kaleidoscopic i think is the right word just make sure that you are responsible in the way that you use these because the colors might in fact get a bit too much for certain people or certain applications so you have to be very mindful of what you do but you can always play around, and explore, and create beautiful visual patterns using a simple trick such as this. And there we have it. We have created infinite visual feedback using only a background, jit.world, and a simple sphere-like green shape. We have just wrapped it around to itself, and now we have endless visual, chaotic, infinite, fractal-like visuals, which I absolutely love. So I hope you start this as the beginning point of a wonderful session of exploration or sessions of exploration and create beautiful visual and audiovisual art. And as always, thank you for watching.